Okay, this video is called the What is the Hype and Bust Cycle of Nelson? Okay, and why do I put Nelson on there? Nelson, you know, Jeff Nelson, he's the guy over at um, at VegSource, um, at VegSource uh, YouTube channel. Let me see if I can shrink myself on this picture. And I heard him say that industry research puts a halo around whatever new supplement comes along and everybody thinks it's great at first. That's step one of the cycle. And then step two of the cycle, so here's this yellow thing around these uh, things like coffee, caffeine, and tea is the, is the health halo of industry-sponsored research. And then what happens over time is people start saying, well, gee, it really doesn't work that well. And so then they say that's when um, you're in the no benefit phase. You realize, well, gee, this thing really doesn't do much. And then as more time goes by and they study the thing some more, have more experience with it, they realize it's harmful. And so it's kind of funny because this is true. We often see this with the new supplements that come along or the new superfood that comes along. And anybody with any experience with medicine sees this is how it typically is with drugs. The new drug comes in and it gets hyped you know, off the charts, like when the selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors came along, let's say late 1980s, um, like, you know, Prozac, for example. Oh, it's so great. It's so wonderful. It's magnificent. It's the answer to all our problems in the treatment of depression. And then they start to see, well, gee, it really doesn't do much better than placebo. And then they start to see it causes terrible complications, makes people crazy, increases their their incidents of bad behavior and, and bad outcomes, okay? And so you see that all the time with uh, drugs that are introduced. So the smart thing is don't jump on the bandwagon when some new hype comes along and give it some time, you know, 10, 15, 20 years, because probably it's going to just head down the same path as most supplements do, as most drugs do. Okay, so again, I heard him say that, you know, both the health halo and the idea of the hype and bust cycle, and then I just, you know, pictured this way to draw it. So here would be, let's say, caffeine, coffee, and tea. The yellow around it is the health halo. And then I jokingly put the green halo around omega-3s and flax and all this stuff. And then the orange I use here with the idea of like, you know, autumn leaves, they're kind of fading out the, the glossy so-called purported benefits. An idea also of it, you know, burning up, going into combustion and fragmenting and being a dotted line rather than a continuous line. Um, and that's things like, you know, everybody thought soy was so great, but it's becoming pretty obvious that soy is not. People used to think MVI multivitamins were so great, but now they're seeing that there's a lot of problems with heavy metals in these vitamins. You don't want to be taking a vitamin unnecessarily giving you extra copper or iron or things that can give you problems from over oxidation. Calcium supplements, so women have increased all cause mortality when they're taking calcium supplements over, you know, let's say 1400. Uh, milligrams a day and then uh, fish people used to think fish is so great but now you study fish and the more fish people eat the more mercury they tend to get the more risk they are being demented not to mention when it's fried all the sat fat and other problems with it you know estrogenic chemicals and other toxic chemicals pcbs and whatnot and omega-6 cooking oils which were sort of purported in the 1960s to be the great alternative to saturated fat. You know, Ansel Keys showed sat fat was bad in the 1950s, and then they started giving everybody omega-6 cooking oils, but then, you know, progressively from the initial work of Meyer Friedman and Ray Rosenman showing that they caused blood sludge as well um, and tissue hypoxia. And, of course, F- minus, you know, comes even before that, you know, all oh, the great thing for your teeth, and now we see that it lowers IQ and it increases cancer risk. So, anyways, this is a typical cycle, and so the lesson to be learned from all this is... Um, you know, sit tight. There's always going to be some new thing coming along hyped and don't jump on the bandwagon because most of these things, unless there's a good logical mechanism and you can clearly see dramatic giant results, it's probably bogus and it's going to go through this, uh, this cycle.